Hi, this is Steve from Kony. I get asked a lot of questions from customers, partners, even internally about SAP Fury Mobile. Um, and, and pretty much people want to know um, when can we use Fury to build mobile apps and when do we need a full-blown mobility platform? Um, how far can you push SAP Fury? And what does it lack? What are the challenges? That sort of thing. So I've put together a presentation which I'm hoping will highlight um, this for people. Um, and we'll go through for the uninitiated what Fury is, what Fury Mobile is. We'll talk about the Kony Mobile platform. And we'll really talk about the differences in the styles of applications um, and what you can do with either. All right, so kicking off, um, just a very quick introduction, SAP Fury. There's a lot of text on these screens, so I'll summarize a lot of it. SAP Fury um, came out in 2013 as a replacement to SAP GUI as the new SAP UX UI. So what it is, is a more modern browser-based HTML5 JavaScript um, type environment where you can very quickly build what I would call average or okay user interfaces in a web style. Um, that are fully integrated with SAP backend functionality. Um, so the other, the other side of SAP Fury Mobile is that you can then take these applications and package them to run as native mobile apps, but we'll talk about that next. The Fury Mobile service um, is what we get asked a lot about, right? So you can build a Fury app, it's quick and easy, you can build quick transactional type applications, but what this allows you to do is really run them as native mobile applications. Um, there's two modes of uh, execution here. There's the Fury client, which is really a runtime container with um, basic predefined native API support for things like cameras, scanners, etc. And it really runs the HTML5 um, and JavaScript in, in a web view. Then you get the more sophisticated prepackaged apps where you want to do more functionality like push notifications offline, etc. Then you've got to wrap in the Cordova um, standard mobile libraries, the Capsule, which is the SAP extended libraries with the SMP hybrid SDK, um, and really build the application um, using these components. So as soon as you go prepackaging, you break the omni channel. Um, capabilities to run on any device um, and it becomes very device specific. So now with HANA S4, um, the SAP mobile platform SMP has really been superseded and the focus is really on Fury becoming the way forward. So the SAP kind of sales staff are telling customers, yes, use Fury for everything to build your own custom transactions, custom native apps, etc. And it's very difficult sometimes for customers to really understand um, what the limitations are or what they're getting themselves into. Basically, the Fury architecture stack is, uh, you know, it's a pretty much a web server environment. You've got your mobile devices working through a web dispatcher, which acts as a reverse proxy, talking to an ABAP front end server, really web server style, which then integrates with your back end SAP business suite system through a SAP gateway. Um, there's also capabilities here for analytics, which are pretty cool through HANA XS, um, which, will, which you can basically work directly through using extended O data constructs straight through to the SAP backend HANA database. So pretty much a web server style architecture um, with very little on the device side and really driven by an HTML5 um, UI UX concept. The advantages of Fury, it's the standard SAP option now. It's free. It covers all SAP primary transactions. There's a library of 600 plus Fury standard apps provided by SAP. It's omni-channel responsive web capabilities. Um, it's open in terms of HTML5 JavaScript development, and it's tightly integrated to your SAP NetWeaver or SAP environments. Quick to develop, um, simple transactions, um, and a good enough UX UI. We'll get into that a bit more. Um, so Fury 
does provide a mobile service, which we spoke about previously for native-like performance, really a container wrapper around HTML5 apps with some API capability. So what are the limitations? Well, once you've used Fury, you'll find that it's not suited to mobilizing real complex business scenarios, um, requiring heavy complex data integrated with binary objects. It's really targeted at very simple transactional functionality. It's SAP centric, which means that it's hard, not impossible, but really hard to merge in um, data from other backends. And it, it really does not have a true offline synchronization engine handling push notifications. It's possible to do a basic sync, um, but not really sophisticated data profiling or anything like that, that you would expect with a true offline app. It's quite complex development. So, you know, once you, you push Fury past um, simple transactions, it doesn't provide a structured development environment for apps in terms of like an MVC, MVVM capability or object oriented type component based or um, UX UI shareable assets, that sort of stuff. Um, and it's also got non-declarative data binding, which is a real pain. Um, there's no code gen and, like I mentioned, limited modular reusability across all your apps. Um, it's a, when you get down to the nuts and bolts, um, the API layers, etc., it's proprietary framework and APIs to SAP. So you kind of, as soon as you do something in Fury, you're bound to SAP. Um, and what I'd call a mediocre UI, UI UX, right? It's okay um, in terms of a web app. But if you want to push into real native mobile first UI UX capability, cutting edge type animations, etc., it's extremely limited and very difficult to include third party libraries and animation libraries, etc. There's no interface management inside SAP. Um, like I say, you're just doing data calls through the SAP gateway which may be fine for simple stuff, but as soon as you want to do asynchronous processing, event-driven push out of SAP based on business events, real hard. Or if you want to try and do any load balancing, uh, you know, you may be getting transaction storms with thousands of users logging on in the morning or on a Friday to do their time writing, etc. Real hard to manage peak and troughs. There's no interface management at all. And like I mentioned, real hard to process integrated binary objects, right? So if you want video, pictures, schematic diagrams, PDF documents integrated with your business data, uh, synchronized with your business data, um, you know, it's, it's, you start hitting some real limitations there. So where does Fury Mobile end? Well, it certainly can be used as a solution to many of the simple mobile challenges, right? But, you know, it's not a mobile platform at its core. It really provides simple user experience, uh, quick transaction generated um, with some mobile first capabilities and basic APIs. Uh, you can push it to do quite a few things, but you will soon find um, huge limitations as the complexity grows and you, you will really need uh, to start looking at a mobile platform to provide more offline data synchronization event driven push capability integration with multiple backends not just sap provide more cutting edge, cutting edge ux ui much more advanced native APIs, um, you know, as things get more and more mobile first um, with beacons, near field communication, all of those sorts of things, geolocation type capabilities, very limited. Um, and also if you want to do a high degree of uh, API management, app management on the device itself, DevOps, that sort of thing, no framework capability for that. Aphoria has some bits, but it's it's not really being pushed forward um, as a modern MBOS um, solution. 
you really uh, need a mobile platform when you get into strong identity management, um, you know, with all your SAML environments, managing tokens across different backends, all of that sort of thing. And, you know, more structured, optimized development, low code um, type RMAD application development and tight integration, like I said, with IoT devices, kind of bot frameworks, wearable technologies, which is all happening now in the next two to three years, right? So you really want to invest in a mobile platform for the future. The Kony mobile platform is um, typically three layers. Um, so you have your mobile middleware service or MBAS down here at the bottom, handling all your, all your identity management, API management, um, integration through with object services to your backends, analytics, um, and all your actual device and application management capabilities. Kony also provides mobile front-end tools to develop leading edge, cutting edge applications that are omni-channel across um, Apple, iOS, Android, Windows, HTML5, um, as well as BlackBerry, etc. Um, incorporating, it's an open framework, which is really important. So you can incorporate third party development tools as well quite easily, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And then at the top, you actually have your applications, which could be Kony's packaged applications, such as field service, banking, employee self-service, etc., cetera, um, as well as custom applications built on the Kony environment. So it really is a, a true platform. Um, Gartner ranks uh, Kony consistently as a leader and visionary for the last four years. And Forrester has Kony right up there as a, a leading edge uh, mobile middleware um, embass solution. So mobile fabric is the middleware handling all the API management, analytics, security, integration, object services, and it pretty much is, uh, you know, handles the data and um, service components between the actual mobile device and the back end services, as you can see here on the right from Salesforce, SAP, SharePoint, all the way through to um, OAuth type Active Directory integration as well. So really the middleware layer, Mobile Fabric, um, really provides the capability to transform data from a number of backend data sources and uh, synchronize that data really effectively onto the device. Kony Visualizer is the tooling to build apps for Kony. Um, and that it provides omni-channel capabilities across iOS, Android, web style applications. Um, and also a real cutting edge design tool um, surfacing, uh, you know, true mobile first UX UI capabilities. Um, it has low code auto generation that where you can gener automatically generate parts of applications. It is common open standards based um, using JavaScript, HTML5 as well. Um, and it has true modular development concepts and um, developer frameworks to reuse capabilities across applications. For SAP Business Suite, Pretty much Mobile Fabric provides the most comprehensive SAP integration capability available today. Over and above, way over and above what is provided through SAP NetWeaver Gateway. So with integration, we support SAP NetWeaver Gateway with the standard uh, OData calls as, as you do with Fury. Um, we provide the low level function calls, but the real power is through um, the R access gateway, which handles real complex objects, binary data, as I mentioned before. Um, I believe you can't do proper integration with SAP without add-ins inside of the SAP environment. Um, so we provide certified add-ins to take full um, advantage of the event-driven capability of SAP um, so that you can provide true push true asynchronous interface management, um, true data object profiling, 
performance management, load balancing within the SAP systems. Um, we also provide standard integration add-ins for all the major mobility functionality of SAP, um, typically mobilizing CRM, enterprise asset management, HR information, workflow, supply chain, uh, you know, um, shipping distribution style information, manufacturing, and you can also add your own custom integration objects and data objects into this framework. The mobile fabric um, can run either on-premise, this is our middleware emboss option, or in a cloud or a hybrid of both. And then that handles all the synchronization here to your back-end applications. So pretty much, um, I hope that gives you an idea of how a mobile framework versus standard Fury, which really only works through a gateway function and really doesn't have all of this inbuilt capability. So just a summary of the advantages of the mobile fabric SAP business suite integration. Um, it's really about supporting more complex binary objects and synchronization. It's providing an open RESTful services, true RESTful, not just O data, and um, being able to handle more complex calls, complex objects, binary data, that sort of thing with an SAP system. The key advantage here is, is really all about scalability and interface management. So asynchronous queuing execution, so you can handle thousands of requests um, you know, per hour, per day, um, to be able to really filter that, load balance it effectively within your SAP environment, handle the error and conflict management that occurs, and, and really cater for high volume performance and optimize transaction processing. So these add-ins and also with the mobile fabric framework provide all of that um, with the extended identity management and security controls that you would expect in a true uh, mobile framework. So in summary, you would use SAP Fury Mobile really for SAP-centric simple transactions. So if you're a SAP-centric shop, you have a simple transaction that you want to mobilize or simple analytics that you want to display that do not require advanced UX UI concepts, APIs on the device, um, do not require complex objects to process and heavy amounts of data. Fury's fine um, and it's a good tool for that, right? But as soon as you do anything complex, and I'm talking about complex data objects um, with like 10, 20 integrated tables, binary objects, uh, pictures, video being integrated with that, where you need cutting edge UX UI with heavy animation features, offline data synchronization, um, so you can continue working disconnected, handle multi backends, that sort of thing, then you really need a mobility platform. And uh, the Kony mobility platform is voted by the leading industry analysts as, uh, you know, the best on in the market. So I hope that this gives you an idea of the differences between SAP Fury Mobile and using the Kony mobility platform to develop applications.